Okay, so um, this thing got us out. Okay, so um, from here, we know that uh, we when we divide uh, this 120 by 12, we get 10, 10 times one, that's 10. And then when you divide 120 by five, it's 24. 24 times one, that's 24. When you divide 120 by eight, you get 15. 15 times one is just 15. So as you can see, 15 plus 10 is 25. 25 minus 24 is just one, okay? So our answer is one over one win. Okay, with the previous one, which means I should have changed this thing as well, okay? The limit of integration. So if you can change them, please do let me know if you get the same solution, okay? But okay, so this is uh, number three. Uh, it doesn't appear. This one. Yeah, this is number three from exercise seven point two to one over one green. Okay, so we got that solution. Okay, uh, which means you can talk about so uh, let us take an example now where okay let me take number number seven from your textbook it also seems to be a hard question let me just take number seven uh, let me just drop this one up Okay, let me do number seven. Uh, okay. So with this one, uh, we are given, actually, let me not talk about much. It's from zero to pi over two, cos squared theta, d theta. Okay. So, this is the only thing that you're given, guys. This is the only thing that you're given. And they say to evaluate. Cos squared theta d theta. Nothing else, okay? What did I say to you? I said to you, when you're given something of this nature, you must always consider half angles, okay? Half angles are very important, okay? In this particular case, we are going to see if whether this half angle thing that I'm talking about is it working, okay? So what am I going to do is, I'm going to have zero to pi over two. Now, I said to you, cos squared theta can be rewritten as one half and one plus cos, well, this is the bracket, but we are writing like this. Let me just write it well. One plus cos two theta, d theta. Okay, so where we're going to take one half outside, we're gonna have this one half from zero to pi over two. And then have one plus cos two theta. Okay, so now you're going to integrate these two. Okay, so I don't know why they said it was hard, but hey, okay. So this is one half. The integral of one is just theta. The integral of this is just negative. Uh, is it negative? Oh, yeah. yeah, it's a positive. It's a positive one half sine of two theta. Okay, the positive of one half sine of two theta. And it goes from zero to pi over two. Okay, so it's, it's just like this. We don't need to do anything else, okay? So here, what we have is, we substitute this uh, pi over two and this zero. So we're gonna have one half theta is pi over two plus one half sine of two times pi over two. Okay, so we have, we have done the part of pi over two, now we need to do the part of zero. So zero uh, plus one half, okay, let me just put it like this, one half sine of two times zero, okay. Do you agree that this whole term becomes zero because sine of zero is zero and zero is just zero, okay? So what we have here is, now this becomes sine of pi and sine of pi, let me write it here, <coughs> sine of pi, is equals to zero as well, okay? 
If I can draw you a small demonstration, we've got three parts where our sign is zero. Our sign is zero when it's zero. Our sign is zero at pi and our sign is zero at two pi, which means our sign is zero at each and every point of pi plus two. No, no, let me just write it. It's pi plus k pi. Do you understand that part, okay? Where our k is an element of integers. Okay, meaning that every time, when let's say our k is one. If our k is one, it becomes, okay, let's say our k is zero, it becomes pi at pi is zero. Let's say our k is one now, it becomes pi plus pi, which is two pi, and at two pi is zero. And then each and every place, as we increase, it's still going to be zero, okay? So even if you can have k is equals to 10, we're gonna have 10 plus one, which is 11. And it's always going to be zero. Okay. If you don't believe me, just check what is sign of 11 and you come back and tell me, okay? Come back and tell me. Sign of 11 pi, I'm confident is zero. Okay, so with, with that knowledge in mind, you must know that this already becomes zero. This becomes zero. So our answer becomes pi over. If our solution is not pi over four at the, at the back, I'm ending this session. I must end this session because there's nothing else I'm doing. Okay. But in the previous one, you saw we got it correct. Uh, that's number seven. Our number seven, let us see together. Our number seven, the solution is, uh, I don't know, oh, there it is, pi over four. Okay, so that's the solution we got. So let's take another example. Guys, me, I'm just a person who's very, okay. This time, the example that we have here, it's number 11 from our exercise, okay? And it has even numbers. Now we're going to deal with that case where I said, if you're given two even numbers, you are going to choose one, okay? You choose one where you're going to use half angle identity, okay? So let us do number 11, okay? Number 11, also they say it's hard. Let's see how hard it is. Okay. Number 11. So for number 11, color is hard. Why did they always give us this pi over 2? So we have this sign squared x, and then we have cos squared x x and then we have dx okay now we need to evaluate this integral okay now okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna need you guys to help me with this okay that's if you can because <clears throat> i know you guys have uh, 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 tricks and games i know you very well okay so let us, let us see, how would one approach this thing, guys? How would one approach this thing? Actually, let me not, let me not take one. Let me choose both of them. It's half and right. So every time you see this, half angle identity must be the first thing that you see, okay? So let's go and uh, let's do it. 0 to pi over 2, uh, half, half angle identity of sign. Uh, what did I say the half angle identity of sign is, guys? Okay, so I'm gonna have one half. Okay, so for half half identity of sine squared is given by one half, one minus cos of two x. Okay, and then we're going to multiply this by one half, which is now for cos. Okay, then have one plus cos two x. Okay, the whole cos function. Okay, now from here we can. We can simply deduce that uh, this is different of two squares. 
So we can just multiply them two or dx. We can just multiply this two and then one fourth. Just take it out by over. Okay, let me not take it out. Okay, but it's fine. It's down. And then this is difference of two squares. Okay. And then what do you know about difference of two squares? One minus uh, one plus uh, cos two x. What do you know about difference of two squares? Okay. We're just going to have this one squared minus cos two x squared. Okay. So, oh, let me write it down. Let me write it down. Such that you didn't get confused. So I've got this one fourth and zero two pi over two, one minus cos squared two x dx. This is going to be interesting. Hey, hey. Very much interesting. Eh? But now we know something about a Pythagorean identity that if we have sine squared theta, okay, this would be cos to one minus cos squared theta. Do you see that this and that they look the same? The only thing that has to change is instead of theta, we're going to say our theta is equal to two x in this case and have sine squared of two x is equal to one minus cos squared of two x. Do you see that, okay? So which means rather than writing this yeah, complicated thing that we have here, we can just write sine squared two, uh, sine squared two x, okay? So we're gonna have, oh, okay. So we're gonna have one fourth from zero to pi over two and have this sine squared of two x, x, okay? So if you feel like you are lost, please let me know. Are you fine, guys? Because what I'm, what I'm about to do, <clears throat> yeah, because I've never seen something like this, so I cannot just interpret this. I need to do something like that, okay? So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna introduce or reintroduce uh, our half angle identity. So we're gonna have one fourth, because there's nothing else that we can do, okay? Our half angle identity of sine is just this one, okay? So we're gonna have one half, but now instead of having just two x, we're gonna have two times this because of this two x. So we're gonna have one minus cos four x, okay? And have our dx, okay? So our half angle identity was affected here because of this two x. So we're gonna have one eight, zero two pi over two, one minus cos four x dx. Now this one is simply, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, integrate, integration. Yeah, so we got one a, and then our integral for this one is just x. Our integral for this one is going to be minus one fourth sine of four x from zero to pi over two. Okay, from zero to pi over two. Now, now, I don't need spacing. So, now why do I feel like I'm speaking to myself? You guys are not saying anything, which means you guys don't need this. You, you, you're smart enough. To, you're smart enough. To, I trust. Okay, so what we're going to have here is, um, let's substitute now, let's substitute, okay? Let's substitute, then our answer must become one eighth, and then we're gonna have pi over two. So the zero part, I'm not gonna write it, guys. X, if we substitute zero at X, it's just zero. So I'm not gonna play with that one. Sine of zero is zero, guys. I'm not gonna play with that one. So I'm more interested in pi over two and this one. So here we're gonna have minus one fourth sine of four times pi over two. So this and that they go to town. And do you see what we have here? Here what we have is sine of two pi. And what did I say? Sine of two pi is equals to sine of two pi is always equals to zero. And therefore our answer becomes pi over sixteen. This becomes my final answer. And if this is not true. I don't know. Okay. 
So let us check the textbook. Go to the. It was number. It is number eleven. It's number eleven. It's this one. Okay. Let's look at its solution. Uh, seven point two number eleven. Please let me know if you see it. Oh, there it is. Number eleven. Uh, this thing is not off. Number eleven is pi over sixty. Okay, it's pi over sixty. So now me, I'm me, I'm tired of trying to show you the, uh, things that uh, 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 that you have proved so many so many times. Okay, now let us go to a different trigonometric integral. Okay, so now we're going to a much different one. Okay, but it has somewhat the same rules. Okay, are you confident with this one, guys? Where we have got sine and cos. If you're confident, please raise your hand. If you are not, please raise or oh, don't raise your hand such that you can to continue. Okay. Okay. They say when days are dark. Okay. Now let us do the other one. This one is uh, it's the one that I like. I don't know why I like it. It's just so now let's say now you are given um integral of tan m x sec n x dx Ooh. Ooh. or you are given <laughs> cot mx cosec and x okay now you're given this what i'm going to say about tan applies to cot what i'm going to say about sec applies to cosec, okay? The difference is the same. Not really, but they've got the same effect, okay? On these types of integrals, okay? Now, hey, I made a lot of nice sorry about it. Now, let us, try and, let us try and solve this one, okay? Let's try and solve, oh, you can't just solve, you need to have an issue. Now, what happens if the exponent of uh, tan, I said when I talk about tan, I talk about cot, okay? Tan, cot, they've got the same effect on this trigonometric integrals, okay? If this exponent, okay, let me just write it down. If this exponent m is odd, if m is odd, for these two, okay, it means that you are going to keep sec tan or cosec cot, okay? Sec tan or cosec cot. Sec tan only applies for this one, cosec cot only applies for this one, okay? And then after that, what are we going to use? We're going to use tan squared x is equals to sec squared x minus one or cot squared x, which is equals to cosec squared x minus one. Do you see that they've got, the effects are the same. The effects are the same. You see, it's like sitting down and standing up. up. Yeah, so the effects are the same. What you see for this, if m is odd, either for this one or for this one, you're going to use any of the two, okay? But it is important for this one, you should keep tan, or sec tan, sec x tan x. Here, you should keep cosec x cot x, okay? It's important that you keep this one. It's important, you're going to see why it's important, okay? Now, let us say now, <sighs> let me choose now n to be even. <laughs> it's going to be. Okay, 
Oh, yeah, another thing, another thing that I want to tell you, spoiler alert. Um, yeah, we always use our U to be equals to sec x, okay? When you use this one, okay? We let our U to be sec x. And here we let our U to be equals to cosec x. I, I want you to see the, 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 Okay, now let's continue. Let us say now our N is even. Okay, if our n is even, okay, this is what you are going to use. You are going to use sec squared x, okay, sec squared x. In this case, here you are going to keep sec, and here you are going to keep cosec, okay. Sec squared, cosec squared, sec squared, cosec squared. Only if n is even, only if n is even. And do you see where n is, okay? It's important, guys. Only if n is even, okay? We're going to use sec squared x is equal to one plus tan squared x, or we're going to use cosec squared x is equal to one plus cot squared x, okay? Now, in this case, your u substitute, u term. Your u term in this case will be if n is even, I want to change this color because I want to show you that it's divided. Okay, so our u in this case will be tan x, and our u in this case will be equal to cot x. Okay, there is a relationship to these things, guys. There is always a relationship to these things. Okay, there's always a relationship to these things. That's a lot of theory that I just did now. It's a lot of theory, and you are doing mathematics, and you are there like, ah, this guy. It must be boring us. Let us do examples, okay? Let us do, ah, oh, beautiful. Okay, uh, I see number, which number is it? Number 23, do you see number 23 is red and number 27 is also red? I'm gonna do both, okay? I'm gonna do both. You must teach them until, yeah. Okay, so I, I will find with the theory that we just did. It was a first theory, which we needed to do in any way, okay? We needed to do that. Okay. Let me just do these examples. It's not a thing, but people are lost. Lost. We need to get them back. Okay. We use the number 23. I don't know why they say these things are hard. Okay, guys, um, what do you think is happening? What do you think? I don't, I don't even know what to ask you because I feel like such questions are not questions that we should. I, let me just do it. I said to you when, when, when you've got something like this, okay? We're just gonna rewrite tan squared x as sec squared x minus okay? Just gonna rewrite it like this. So there's nothing much that you're going to do. There's nothing interesting about this. It's hard to be seen. Take that off. Sec squared x minus one dx, okay. Okay, so you're gonna have the integral of sec squared x dx minus integral of x. Uh, the integral of sec squared, sec squared x is uh, tan, tan x, and then the integral of x is just x. That's nice. This textbook is disappointing. Okay, let us see if it's true. You can think the question is easy. I don't think it's true. So, that number 23. Oh, which one am I showing? 
Yes, sir. Okay. So I'm just to do number 23 here. Do you see number 23 here? Turn x minus x plus c. Turn x minus x plus c. Turn x minus x plus c. Hi. Okay. So let us do number 27. I was super excited. Okay, number 27. That's my 27. So number 27, we have the integral of tan cube x got sec x got dx. Okay. All right. This year we'll find something. To find something. To okay. Uh, how would you say? Uh, how can I ask? This? How would you approach this question, guys? Okay, I told you. You must ask yourself: Is the value of tan odd or even? Is the value of sec odd? Or even, but in this case, they are both or okay, they are both or, which means we need to, to use the first uh, 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 theoretical part that we okay. So, uh, we just separate this in, two, in terms of tans. So, if we separate this in terms of tan squared, I have tan squared x, okay, okay. If I move fast, tell me, otherwise, I'm gonna be tan x. Okay, so we have this. Okay, and then we said we need to keep sec x tan x. It's important that you keep sec x tan x. It's important. You're going to see why. Okay, you're going to see. Okay, now I said to you after finding this, you must always use, always use the trigonometric identity of tan squared x is equal to sec squared x minus one. Okay, so therefore we're gonna use it and put it here. So we're gonna have this as integral of one of sec squared x minus one. And then we're gonna have sec x, tan x, x. Okay. Okay, uh, our, our thing is gonna end in 10 minutes. So let us just go through this one. And we'll do just one more theoretical part, then we are done for trigonometric integrals. The next session, I will announce it in the group chat, okay? Which is on Friday. Okay. Now, uh, we're gonna use you. Remember what I said, you should be here. We're gonna let you be equals to sec x. Du is equals to sec x tan x dx, which is this part at the, this part at the back. It's d, and then just have u squared minus. Okay, so here we have the integral of u squared minus d, which is just the integral of u squared d minus the integral of 1d, is just Give this such questions using that. One third u cubed minus u plus c. But we are not done, okay? Our u is sec, so we're gonna have one third sec cubed x minus sec x plus c. Do I need to, to check this, guys, if it's the same thing in the context? Do I need to check it, guys, or should I move forward? Uh, 
things like that. Let's just do the last part of the theory then because our session is gonna end. Oh, you want me to check it? I'm sure it's the same. If it's not the same, ending the session. Number 27, somewhere here. That's 31. What is this now? Come on. Oh, 27 is just about 31. You see it there. 27, one third sec, sec cube minus sec x plus. <sighs> I'll show it to you. Uh, number 27, this one. This one. It's one third sec cubed x minus sec x plus c, which is exactly what I got. Okay, I don't need to do many examples. Uh, you, you are the people which are to explain it. It's possible in terms of being the problems in text. <coughs> but it's coming just be too much. I don't know why. What is that? Okay, the last part, it's when you are given something of this nature. This thing only applies for sign. Okay, I've never seen it for sec, cod, 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 tertian, or sec. Never seen it. So, I've got the first one, let me call it A, where we have sine, let's say of A, let's have cos of B. Okay, let's have D, which is sine of A, C, C. Cos of A, sine, cos of B, sine of A, sine of A, cos of B. Cos of A, cos of B. Okay. But, 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 but I'm not saying that this is exactly equal. I'm not saying this is equal to cos of A, sine of A. I'm not saying that, okay. Make it out of I said, didn't say anything. Okay. So here we're going to have one half. I have sine of A minus plus sine of A plus. You can actually prove this, okay? You can take this, try to solve that. Multiply everything by two. You've got two sine A cos B. What is this? Is just sine two something oh it's not the same but yeah something like that. <laughs> it's not the same thing but you can see that this is that this is by just okay let's try okay. this is cos of a minus b minus cos of a plus okay now, our last one is so half cos of a minus b plus minus cos of a plus. Okay, so these ones I'm not going to move them. Let's do example number 41. Current is hard. <sighs> this question is hard. Okay, we're not the same. Maybe I might see them as easy. Maybe somebody might see them as hard. But it's not fair for me to say it's not fair for me to say. I assume that all of you understand consciousness. Okay, consciousness. Okay, according to this, which of the three does this thing correlate to? Or correspond to correspond. Yes, which one? Is it A, B, C, or D? A, B, C. Is it A, B, or C? 
Similarly. E. It's E. Thanks, my friend. Now, we do not need to do anything. We are just going to straight substitution. Okay. Integral. We're going to have one half. We said we're going to use A, right? So we're going to have sine of 8x minus 5x plus sine of 8x plus 5x. Okay. Perfect substitution, guys. We do not need to do anything. Here, I'm just going to do one example because, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to take out this one half. I have the integral of sine 3x because 8x minus 5x is 3x plus sine of 8x. Okay. Dx. So this is just that. One half. So this is where this thing is going to be important. Remember that one that I was talking about. Okay. You're going to see if you guys do this. Sine or integral sine of a B X X. I told I asked you what is the general of this? Nobody answered. Okay. Okay. So this is negative right here. Negative one third cos of three x. Okay. Negative one third cos of three x minus because this is already this is this one, 113 cos of 13x. Okay, so you just multiply each and every term by one half, so it becomes 116 cos of x minus negative, oh yeah, minus that, 26 cos of 13. Okay. I didn't see it. Let's check. Number one. Got it correct. 